a review because we have went through three separate weeks in our series, Family Feud, and I know you, uh, you don't remember any of them, so I'm going to have to review them, okay? And we got some new people here that I'm not going to embarrass. I, I promise I'm not embarrassing that Dylan uh, Fraley is here, okay? I'm not going to embarrass you. Uh, that's not Bella Bonkaya's boyfriend. I won't embarrass you either. Look at this guy in the polo. No, I'm joking. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, I love to put you guys on the spot, but there was just something about that worship. I don't know about you, uh, Julia, she shared that communion meditation. And I've heard communion meditations. I've given communion meditations. I've read the story of Jesus. And, and I kid you not, something hit me in my heart this time, and I realized again that Jesus died for me. I even had a little tear. It squirted out and hit the stage. But the thing is, uh, I realized that. And so everything we've been talking about in this series on family, and then when I realized that God has actually given them a role in my life, and remember last week I said that we are a treasure to God. And so God has empowered our parents to protect his treasure, to protect and hold something very important in himself. And that's why, as we talked about through the weeks, the first week we talked about God's patience towards us can help us grow in patience towards our family. That we can be patient with our family because it is something that God's patience, as an example to us, it is something that we should portray to our family. The second week we talked about how God's forgiveness for us can help us be more forgiving towards our family. That whole motto, we forgive as we have been forgiven. It's easy for me to forgive someone, not on my own ability, because God has forgiven me. And because of that, I can, I can give that out freely because I'm like, oh, man, like I jacked up big time, but, but God forgave me, and, and they jacked up big time in my life, so I should forgive them. I should pay it forward. And then last week, we talked about how when we honor our parents, it shows how we honor God. I honor my parents, good or bad, because God is the one who should really be honored. And I won't lie, guys. Can I admit something to you? Last week was one of the hardest messages that I have preached since being here. You wanna know why? Because some of you have some pretty crummy parents. I just wanna be honest. When I was preaching, I was looking out at some of you and, and I literally was like, honor your parents. And then I was looking at people and I was thinking, man, but for them, that'd be tough. For that girl, man, that would be difficult. Because a lot of you have confided in me and have shared what you've went through. And, and I thought about it. I had questions throughout the week. I had numerous people coming to me and saying, well, how am I supposed to honor my parents when they have done this to me? When they have cheated on my mom? When they cheated on my dad? When they physically abuse me? When they tear me down? When they're never there? They just provide financially, but they're never there emotionally. How can I honor my parents? And I was sitting there, and, and honestly, my answer is this. We don't have the ability to honor our parents, but he does. We can take the higher road and be a better parent than they are by honoring them regardless of their nature. That is the best thing. I'm not saying trust them. I'm not saying be their BFF. I'm just saying forgive them. Let that be free of yourself. And so today we're going to talk about another thing, and, and this, is, this is an incredibly interesting topic because all of us are going to be able to, to relate to this, but we're all going to have different opinions on where we stand with this conversation today. And so today we're going to be talking about something that is um, love, something that is that I hope we can zero down and get a better definition for because the reality is we have a ton of different definitions of love. And so first, I'm going to tell you some things 
uh, about myself, okay? I'm gonna show you some things. So the first thing I wanna show is a video. Can we go ahead and show this video of something in my life?
And so I want to challenge us this morning to get back to what it means. And so with that, what is love? And baby, don't hurt. I want to give you a definition. And this is a definition that we've talked about before, but as often as I share it, I didn't hear anyone mention it. And that's why I'm going to bring it up again. And that's from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to put it up here. This is what it says. You want to know the definition of love? This is it. Okay? Love is patient. Interesting. Message one. Love is kind. It is not envy. It is not boast or brag. It's not proud. It does not dishonor others. Interesting. Last week's message. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. Oh, this is a huge one. Everyone listen up because I hear this all the time when people are in relationships. It keeps no record of wrongs. You're not keeping a script and saying, I know what you've done. Remember what you did five months ago? It doesn't keep a record of wrongs to leverage it against someone. That's called manipulation. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. So some of you ladies, and I, I have some ladies saying, okay, what am I supposed to like it? Ah! I don't know why they sound like that. Ah! And I just say, look at Brandon Walker, and that's what you try to get. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, I just say, I say, okay, you have a guy in your life, put him to the test. You want to see if he's a good guy? Is he patient? Is he kind? Does he not envy? Does he not boast? Is he not proud? Does he not bring up past wrong? Does he protect? Does he trust? Does he have, does he have hope in his life? Key word, does he have Christ in his life? Does he persevere? Is he a person that does not delight in evil? Is he a person of the world? Is he a person of God? And so we put him to the test, and this is incredible, because now, when looking at this list, I want to be honest with you guys, I don't feel like I'm that good at a lot of things on that list. Isn't that list, like, kind of impossible? Like, I, mean, I might be okay patience-wise, but I think about envy or, or, you know, perseverance. It's like when the wind blows, oh, man, I'm down, you know? A lot of us, we struggle to persevere. It's like one thing, one, one measly thing goes on in our life, and we're broken, right? But we got to recognize love. And so I think about this list, and, and I'm not that good at a lot of these things, and, and Probably most of us aren't that good at a lot of these things. Or we're okay. Or we can be better. Do you agree? Right? And, and that's okay because we're trying to grow. We're trying to get better. And so I want to give you guys a better idea of what it looks like to love. And so I want to put a family photo up there. Can you put that picture up there? All right. Yeah. <laughs> It took me a long time to find a picture of this family that was appropriate, okay? I just want to say that. So, so here's a picture, and, and I want you guys to really, really think about this for a second. You know, at first glance, this family looks like an ideal family. You know, they're spending some time together. There's a couple sisters, father, mother, a son. You know, they're, they're kind of wearing casual clothes. It's nothing crazy fancy, and they're just posing for the camera, right? It's nothing wild. But if you, if you guys have ever been a part of family photos, when you got to get the family together, guys, I can't think of a worse thing in life. Like, everyone go line up! And then it's like, you stand there! You stand there! Let's get every kid to be happy for 10 seconds, okay? It's impossible. Last time I took a picture of my family on Thanksgiving, my little crap is pants, okay? <laughs> I just want to say, can I say that in here? Okay, so here's the thing. Milo literally, my mom took off his diaper, and then he pooped his pants, okay? And so I'm holding him while it's all mushy in his pants, which is mushy to me, and he's smiling like nothing's wrong, you know? So here's the thing. Pictures are terrible. Usually there's fighting and there's annoyance and no one wants to stop what they're doing to take a family photo. If you do, you are possessed, okay? So here's the thing. 
They look happy, and usually when you take a family photo, everyone looks happy, but in reality, you're probably miserable. Right? So you think about a family photo, and you think about this picture, and they're all smiles, right? But if you know anything about this family, they are not all smiles. On our family photo, we might look all smiles, but actually, we are probably not all smiles. I can go down the list. Rob, Rob has gained a lot of weight because of depression. He has some mental health issues. He's been battling with, with his identity, and he got a girl pregnant, but then they're like not involved in each other's life anymore. Courtney, her and her husband, he, he left her for a 20-year-old girl. You know, Chloe, she had two guys cheat on her, two NBA stars cheat on her, and the last one cheated on her when she was pregnant with his son. Think about, uh, uh, what's her name, Kim? Kim, she's on her third marriage, and her last marriage lasted less than three months. And then you have the mom, who's kind of like the leader of them all, and then Bruce decided to change his identity. And so you look at this family, this family that's in the limelight that everyone looks to as people that are prominent in, the, in, the, in social media, on magazines, whatever, and, and they got some crazy issues. They got some serious issues. And when I think about that, we are all rarely all smiles. It's rare. But there's something in this photo that I think that we get lost in and we think is normal. So here's the question. What do you think would happen if once in a while we focus instead on putting a smile on the faces of our family members? What do you think would happen if we decided, you know what, I am just going to focus on putting a smile on my family's face. And instead of like despising them or being angry with them or being bitter or just saying, hey, you exist to help me, what would happen if we said, you know what, I'm going to be intentional to put a smile on their face and not expect them to put a smile on my face. You know, last Halloween, uh, I had a moment like this. My sisters came out, one from California, one from Michigan. You saw a couple of them. They've been here over the last couple of weeks. And actually, I'm going to go leave on Tuesday. I'm going to fly out to California, San Francisco, to see one of my sisters. And, and so they were here last Halloween, and it was the first time they'd seen my home. It's the first time they'd been here to see my new life. And when they got here, you know, we had a lot of fun. We took the kids trick-or-treating. But then my sisters went away, and they said, hey, we're going to go to the grocery store, grab a couple things for dinner. And we're like, okay, no problem. We'll stay here with all the kids. And then they were gone for almost two hours. I'm like, what? Where did they go? And Kroger is literally a mile down the road. And they were just going to go grab a couple items. And then when they got back, they said, hey, can you help us? And so I went out in the car, the car was packed with groceries. They had spent about two to three hundred dollars on groceries on my family. And they said, hey, we just want to give you a housewarming gift. We just want to lighten up your day. You're hosting us, we're eating all your food. We know, we know that you have a bunch of kids and expenses. And I was blown away. I was, I was surprised. Have you ever been surprised? When a family member did something to you and it just put a smile on your face. And you're just sitting back like, wow, they did that for me. And so I remember being shocked at that kind act that they did for me. I was happy. And I think back about me being selfish. And I remember I was 19 years old and my family, they wanted to go to Panama. Right? They wanted to go to the country of Panama, see the Panama Canal. They knew we were all getting older, all my siblings, and they just wanted to go on this last family trip. And they were saying, hey, Winston, we would really love for you to go, be part of this. We'll pay for everything. And so when the time came up to me deciding whether I was going to go or not, I was selfish. I said, now nah, you guys go ahead. I just want to stay and hang out with friends. I'll take care of the house, but you guys can go. And I remember my family being upset. My parents just wanted a family trip. 
And all I wanted to do was stay and hang out with friends. I didn't want to go with my family. I don't care if it was to another country. I don't want to hang out with them. I just want to go and do my own thing. And I think about that. As much as my sisters put a smile on my face, there's been numerous times that, that I've been selfish and not put a smile on, on my parents' face or my sister's face. And so I think about that. I prioritize my own happiness over theirs, over the happiness of themselves. But in the same token, with that, I mean, there's numerous other stories that we all have of mistakes that we've made. And so here it is. I'm going to name off three things real quick. We have to understand with our family that real love is selfless. Real love is selfless. Love begins when there's nothing you look for in return. It's selfless. You do not look for a return on your investment. When you give in to this investment, you expect nothing. I'm not scratching your back so you scratch mine. I scratch your back and expect nothing in return. Real love towards our family is selfless. The second thing is real love is sacrificial. Love isn't just a feeling, it's a commitment, and most importantly, a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. It will cost you something. If you are going to love your family, then you will have to give up something. Just like a relationship with Christ. You can't have it and not expect trials and, and persecution and people looking at you different and, and changing of lifestyle choices. There will be a cost. And the final thing is real love is spirit-led. That's a big one, and a lot of us are like, what in the world does that mean to be spirit-led? It means that we can't conjure up enough love in our life, so we have to allow God to infiltrate our heart so we can love as he loves. If it's my choice, I'm going to be selfish. If it's my choice, I'm not going to be sacrificial. I'm going to do things that help me, but he Lord of my life, he can change that. He can come into my life. He can make it so I am spirit-led. So we have to remember those three things. There's another New Testament author named John, and he has this to say about love, and I want to jump into this real quick. This is 1 John 4, 18 through 21. This is what it says. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. Forever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. If you don't love, you're a liar. You can't have both. You can't just hate and say you're good. It's a line in the sand. This is a, a spirit-led line in the sand that God says you can't. It's not possible. So as God challenges us, I want to challenge you guys. Because this is something that is very important. At this time, we're going to have uh, some of our leaders, they're going to go back and they're going to hand out something to each person in this room. You guys can go get those little pieces of paper. Oh, and you guys can hand them out. So everyone's going to get take a piece of paper for every family member, immediate family member. Okay, so if you have two, take two. If you have three, take three. You guys get it, right? Your dog definitely does not count. Not at all. Nope. And so these are your instructions. When you get one of these cards, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take a few minutes, and I want you to put some things down there on that card for each family member. So I want you to write the name of each family member on one of the cards. So if you have a brother, write his name on one of the cards. If you have a sister, write her name on the other card. One for each, and then I want you to write down, make a list on those cards of things that they love. Things that they love. Things that will put a smile on their face. 
Maybe it's a favorite hobby, a certain food. Maybe there's something they love having done for them. And when you look at each card and choose one thing for each of your family member, that's what I want you guys to do. I want you to write down something that puts a smile on their face. Maybe for your mom, it's you clean your room or you do the dishes or the laundry. You write down a list for each person of things they love and I want you to circle one thing for each family member and I want you to do that this week. So take a moment, write down on that list one thing that you will be doing for each of your family members this week to put a smile on their face. demonstrate to God how much you love him. Whether it's your mom, dad, siblings, grandparents, cousin, here's what God is calling you to do. To love them. Because showing love to your family shows your love to God. It's so much bigger than your family. I remember a story on Time Magazine about a, a writer she had went overseas to a very impoverished country in Africa. When she was in this country, she was observing the poverty of a child that walked up to her asking for food. She said he was, he was tugging on her shirt saying, do you have anything to eat? As she looked down at him, she realized she didn't have lunch, but she had a little bar of food. So when she gave this little child the bar of food, the child took it and quickly ran away. So she felt in her heart to follow that child. So as she followed the child through the crowd, the child ran up to his little brother. What she saw next would change her life. That boy had taken that bar, ran up to his little brother, who is sitting on a brick wall, eyes closed, mouth open, not moving. And when she took that, or when the boy took that to his brother, he opened it up and he leaned forward and he put the food in his brother's mouth. And when he put that food in his brother's mouth, he set it on his tongue and he took his jaw and he started chewing the food for his brother, lifting it up and down brother did not have enough strength left in him to eat that food. The writer looked at the distance as this boy who was clearly starving took that food and gave it to his brother sacrificially because he wanted him to live. As she continued to watch on as the, the little boy lifted up his jaw and lifted it down, it was clear that the the boy was already lost. He didn't make it. Guys, we have no idea what people have to deal with in this world every day. If we would just open our eyes and realize the gifts that God has given us, the love that he's put in our lives, we realize that this is what he calls us to. We might not have the best things, the newest clothes, the best boyfriend or girlfriend or parents, but we do have the best Heavenly Father. And He loves you. And because He loves you, He asks in return that you love your family. Every family feeds. 
If you're looking for a perfect family, I'm sorry, you're not going to find it. You won't. But I believe that God can change your heart to put a smile on your family's face. Take that and do that this week. God, I thank you that you have given us a moment in time to recognize that we are not perfect. We are imperfect creatures. We are difficult at times. But we can change that. Let us be selfless. Let us be sacrificial. Let us love with expecting nothing in return. As that little boy gave up the food to try to save his brother, let us give up our little piddly things that we have against others. As we sing this song, God, let us remember that truth. We love you and we pray this song.